Good evening. Yes, hello. Good evening, and welcome to the uh, Red Oak Elementary School, and welcome to Red Oak Park Unified School District PKK uh, Parent Information Night. And um, the first thing I want to do is introduce myself. My name is Jeff Davis. I'm the superintendent, the proud superintendent of the Oak Park Unified School District. And um, I will tell you one thing, and then I'll go on to my next video. You made a great choice. If you're a resident of Oak Park, you made a great choice. If you're a DOC parent, you made a great choice. If you're on permit, you made a great choice. That's all I'm going to tell because you, you, are, you are now a part of the number one um, school district in the county of Ventura and one of the top 10 academic achievable school districts in the state of California. So you made an incredible, incredible choice. And the stars of the Oak Park Unified School District are twofold. Um, our students and our incredible teachers. And over to my right are our incredible TK and K teachers. And I just wanted them to stand up for a minute so we can apply that. So that <laughs> so, uh, you know, when you work in a, in a career for 37 years, like I have in public education, you've been a high school principal and middle school principal, and you've done all these different things, um, you see a lot. And I've worked at other super high achieving school districts, right? And I've never seen a group, and this is true, I tell everybody, I've never seen a group of TK and kindergarten teachers like we have in our school district. They're the most dedicated, passionate, committed educators you will ever see. Um, I think the, you know, all of our teachers are in our district are, in my life, fantastic. It all starts here. It all starts here. And they are a humongous reason as to why we're one of those top 10 academic achieving uh, unified school districts in the state of California. So I think they deserve to help. Um, and so tonight you're gonna to learn a lot. You do have you do have a packet. You do have your Oak Park pencil. Very cool. Nice little takeaway today. Party gift. Um, but first I wanted to introduce some other people, then I'm gonna hand it off to Mrs. Uh, Tammy Herzog, who was our assistant super vet services. Uh, but real quick, um, I wanted to introduce uh, the president of the Oak Park Unified School District Board of Education, Mrs. De Denise Halpstein. Um, real quick, um, the Board of Education in this district is incredibly supportive. Um, every time we go to them, we say, hey, we need this, we need that, you know, whatever. Um, and it's the right thing to do for kids. They have never failed us. They have always done the right thing for kids. And I think that's another reason why this school district is so phenomenal, because we have Board of Education members, you know, the, their, their children went to school here, or they go to school here, and they're very, very passionate uh, about this school district, about this community, and I think that's really, really important. So I am not going to bore you anymore, because all these other people have all the important information. So I'm pleased to bring up now our Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, Mrs. Tammy Grimmels. Well, good, good evening, everyone. It's so exciting to see you here. This is the first step in your child's educational adventure and journey, and we're so excited that you decided on Oak Park Unified School District and that you've entrusted us with your child. That is the greatest compliment you can give to us as an organization, and we appreciate that. Um, we have a lot of information to share with you tonight, um, and I think you're going to um, enjoy it. Um, I'd like to ask a couple of things. First of all, we're going to have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation, so if you could maybe jot down your questions um, and hold them for that time, that would be fantastic. Um, I also wanted to let you know that we have a website, um, our opusd.org website, um, has a special TK page with FAQs. So any questions that you might have in addition to the ones that you have tonight, um, you can also find um, those on the web page. So please make sure you visit that as well. And we'll put that web um, site address up at the end of the presentation and we can jot that down. It's also about to know the packet. Um, so at this time, I'd like to meet, uh, introduce a few others um, who are here with us tonight. I wanted to do a quick shout out to our tech support and here we have Eric and Noah who will be talking about um, and I also wanted to introduce um, some of our speakers who will be presenting um, tonight. Um, my name is Tammy Herzog, as you know, I'm the Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services. 
Uh, next to me, I have um, Jennifer Golden. She is the Director of Early Childhood Education and a program support specialist. We have Mr. Brad Benyon, um, who's our Director of Student Support and School Safety. Um, we have Mrs. Sarah Hall. Um, she's our Director of Extended Care. Um, Diane Dale Diamond is the principal of uh, Bell Website, couldn't be with us this evening, uh, but she also assisted with the presentation. Um, and if we have Heather Sloan, get the right turn, and she is the principal at Oak Hill um, Elementary. And then we have Mrs. Jackie Wanda, who is the principal here at Red Oak um, Elementary. So they're going to be um, helping us with the presentation tonight. Um, and just before we go, I had a couple more introductions. Over here in the corner, we have um, Ms. Ellen Chevalier who is our Administrator of Curriculum and Instruction, and she helped a lot with this presentation of this evening, so thanks to her. And then I wanted to introduce individually each of our teachers uh, at this point in time. I could just stand up and wave when I introduce you. <laughs> um, from um, Brookside, we have Casey Webb and Barbie <laughs> Lee. And representing Oak Hills, we have Andrea Sue. And from Red Oak, we have Jimmy Spit. Oh, Jimmy's not here. No, we're not. So, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Jimmy Spit's good right here. Robin Lund. And Randy Bettina. So, we appreciate all of them coming out. They're as excited as you are about the new potential batch of little ones coming our direction um, next year. All right. Um, Fair. All right, so this is our agenda for this evening. Uh, we're going to be looking at what is trans transitional um, kindergarten. We're going to talk about uh, the TK program overview. We're going to look um, at some additional TK information. We're then transition into kindergarten, and I'll look specifically about our kindergarten program. Uh, and we'll talk about Bug Oak Park, which is our after school program for our students. Um, so that's the agenda for this evening. Um, tonight, we have both TK and TK parents of attendance. Um, we will begin with our TK information and then move into our K information. Uh, again, a reminder that our TK program is a two-year program, so your students will be doing both TK and K. You don't skip K if you do TK, it's a two-year program, and you would do both of those years. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn over the program to Mrs. Um, Jennifer Gold. Thank you. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I see some familiar faces, and as one of you has said on the way in, um, they already have had one child go through TK, but things are changing, so they came back to learn more and uh, hear what, what's going on um, and what is, what's changing in the world of TK. So this is a milestone. Um, it might be your child's first experience in public school. Uh, this comes with a lot of excitement. They're growing up, but you can also have some trepidation, some questions, some unknown. So. Um, in the past, four-year-olds often attended preschool prior to coming to kindergarten. Maybe when, when most of us were uh, young, we went to preschool and then the graders grew to kindergarten. Um, starting in 2009, Oak Park School District welcomed students who turned five between September 1st and December 2nd in what was called Discovery Kindergarten. Um, recently, the California legislature has mandated that school districts across the state provide free public school to all four-year-olds by 2025-2026. And again, as Mr. Kerbog said, this is a... Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, this is a, a two-year two program. So um, TK is really meant to be a bridge. Um, I've heard it described as the connective tissue between, um, between preschool and kindergarten. And as we said, do what you attend TK and kindergarten for the new year. So as you may know, may or may not know, the state um, implemented a three-year rollout program for TK. And so what that means is the cutoff date for your child's birth date um, has moved um, throughout the last year, two years, and this year, um, the students who are eligible to attend TK need to turn four on or before June 2nd. Next year, that date will go to September 1st. And that, at that point, all four-year-olds will be included in the group. So there, um, it was a three-year rollout of that program. Um, I did also want to mention that, that that date is really, we stick to it pretty strictly, really strictly. Um, and while some 
uh, in the past, we used TK assessments for placement. That is no longer the case. So what we used the TK assessments, if your child has come to do a TK assessment, the teachers may have explained that we are using those to get to know your child and also to, um, to help us balance the classes so that we kind of know who's coming in and have um, you know, different types of students at different levels, all the participating in the classes. Um, so over the overview of our program, TK is a four hour program, four hours a day, and we're using developmentally appropriate material and curriculum. Um, all of our teachers are highly experienced and both in child development and they also are credential, you know, credential teacher. Uh, we have a maximum currently of 12 to one, and but we have a cap of 24 on those TK classes. So um, what that means is there's always two adults um, in the classroom with the 24 students. Not every class, we, that's the math that we were at. Um, and our, our TK students, have access to our elementary elementary counselor and positive behavior support just as all of the other grade levels do mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of collaboration between um, the the preschool and the TK um, teachers in terms of students who are who have attended our preschool what they're doing in our preschool and helping um, to collaborate with what goes on in the school. So really, if you take nothing away, um, nothing else away from this presentation tonight, the first two bullet points are really the essence of what we want for your child in the TK program, really all throughout their schooling, but this is their first exposure to public schools. So the, the primary goal is for students to feel safe and happy in a school environment. And we want to foster a love of learning. Um, we're really, the state has mandated that we do play-based learning. Children learn through play, and so that's what we do. Um, they're learning all kinds of things all day long, woven in throughout the day, um, but it, it, we do do a lot of play-based learning. Uh, and the other important things that we're learning in TK are those learning, what we call learning to learn skills, where they're learning about routines and expectations, the expectations to follow, following directions, making connections with things that I know from outside of school, what my friend has talked about, that kind of thing, and also um, just developing our problem solving skills. So again, this is just a quote about um, play being an important vehicle for developing that self-regulation. So how do I calm myself? How do I um, be ready to learn in the environment? And also, it promotes uh, language development, cognitive development, and social competence. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna turn over to um, Jackie Longo, and she's going to look at front here. Thank you. Hi, welcome everyone. Uh, just I'm going to the When I step off to the side, that's all right. Um, so I have a lot of trust and confidence in the program here, so much so that my daughter is in TK here right now, and I think she's in Mississippi as well. So in addition to that, I am very much so part of the community. I live right next door to the school. So <laughs> if you see me out and about, please feel free to say hi. And if you yourself, it would be great to get to know all of you outside of here as well. Okay, uh, moving into social emotional behavioral learning. So our little ones have a lot of big feelings and big emotions. We may see that at home with your little ones as well. Here in ET Pride, we really focus on our children being able to have five statements. So being able to identify those emotions. So say, I feel mad or I feel frustrated. Whatever it is in that moment, giving them that language. Seven. And in just to that, and Jennifer spoke a little bit about just as well. Problem solving is really big in TK. We want to give our children the strategies and skills to be able to solve conflict. That takes a long time for our children to develop, and it starts right here in TK. We'll see that on here as well. As far as self-advocacy, of making sure their children are being able to stand up for themselves. So if someone is doing something, they can say, I don't like that. So it's a lot about giving our children the tools and strategies when they're having those big feelings and having to get over the curve. 
There's a lot of diversity. So I'm sure at home you might see your children brushing the sliding or pretending to do start with me. And for this week's day classroom, we have a lot of dramatic fun. There's a press up kitchen. Our children get to pretend they may form a family or a house. And then we have specials as well. So with the specials, it's not just available for kindergarten through fifth grade. It also goes to our students and speak sites as well. So the specials do include art prep. Our truck is a company that we contract with in order to provide art for our students, but they do not just get art during that time. They also have art naturally built in throughout the day. With our GA teachers, they do a lot of art within the classroom. Library as well. Um, they have books that they bring home weekly, and we have a librarian at every single elementary school. We also are going to be having music next year. So we're excited about that. And then innovation lab, our students have the chance to think critically and create. We have Legos um, with the innovation lab. They get used to how to work different apps on the iPads in there. But there's a lot of play thinking critically and collaborating together. And then field trips are also there. Field trips are not uh, specific on here as they might vary from site to site. And then, that's my little red right hand. <laughs> I got a thunder wound in the for that. So, this is a really important slide. Um, this is a sample schedule that we took from the beginning of a TK era. And you can look through the schedule, you can read it yourself, and you might look at this and think, wait, there's, where are the academics? Where is the, where's the math period? Where's the reading period? And the answer to that question is it's really woven throughout the day. So there is a time when a TK teacher is necessarily going to stop everyone and say, time for math. Um, but what's happening all day, every day, is we're counting our friends in our morning meeting. We're, we're talking about um, the books that we're reading. And it's really something that developmentally is it's just done through play and it's done throughout the day, every day. Um, in terms of self care, what we need, if the toileting is a big one. So um, we want students to be toilet trained when they come to TK. Now, what we recognize is that this is a process. So there are times when uh, four-year-olds have accidents and we need to have a plan for that. However, we want to make sure that you as parents know that um, it is, it is um, something that we're hoping that you're working on, um, especially over the summer. Um, I had a parent ask me a couple of years ago, should I, should I help should I teach my child to wipe? Yes, you should teach your child to wipe before they come to TK. Um, so when they do come to, to TK though, the staff do provide multiple reminders for toileting throughout the day. They get really good at looking, you know, noticing the potty dance, that kind of thing. Um, making sure that, that students have lots of opportunities to use the restroom. Um, and also provide reminders for the routine, such as flexing, hand washing, that kind of thing. Um, Staff can assist with clothing, but we encourage you to help your child to be as independent as possible, to dress them in, you know, things that are easy to take on and off. Um, it also doubles if they're not sent in their best clothes. It helps when they get muddy on the playground um, and that we have extra clothes available in the classroom. If um, they do get muddy, they can change into their extra set of clothes or if they have such good for dinner. Um, and if your child is still working on that toileting independence and they're, they're not quite there yet, that's something you would want to let your teacher know um, right away at the beginning of the school year, just so that we're prepared and we can have a protocol for that. So again, the expectation is that we're working on it and you know that the kids are um, toilet trained when they come into, into TK, but again, we recognize that it's a problem. Sometimes uh, parents have asked the question, since we're that bridge between preschool and kindergarten, are we doing naps at TK? And we do not do, do naps. Um, so we have the early dismissal. And so either some kids still may nap when they get home, but we do not do naps at school. Um, for lunch, the TK students don't eat lunch at school as part of the school day, but the lunches are available after school. For example, um, at Red Oak, um, 
just like all parents can pick up the lunch and the students but with the students and they can enjoy the lunch on campus so um they're provided by the school district and snacks are provided uh, it can be provided free of charge as well or um they can be set from home um what And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to. I'm actually going to jump back a few slides. There was an important slide that we next missed on um, learning. All right, come back. Go back to into the highlight this one. So, um, all of our um, activities that we use are based on the preschool TK learning foundations that are set by the state of California. Um, so, like, that guides everything that we do in the classrooms. Um, there's a strong focus on language development for all of our students. Um, our pre-literacy skills are through things like letters and sound, concepts of print, like tracking as you read, um, vocabulary, et cetera. Um, looking at pre-math skills, um, the students do a lot of counting. Um, as the middle school, we're just talking about, uh, they actually do some basic graphing, um, some number identification, one-to-one uh, -one correspondence of objects, uh, and those types of things uh, for math. But again, it's all the play based learning. So the students don't know they're learning math, but it's really fun, but they're doing these things along the way. Um, and then we have pre writing, um, which includes how to hold a pencil, um, drawing, coloring, uh, those types of skills. Um, and then they also have some social studies and science built in um, throughout the day as well. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that slide since we had missed it earlier. Are we are now going to move on to kindergarten. So students eligible for kindergarten um, for the 24-25 school year will be those students who turn five on or before September 1 of 2024. Uh, these students will be at least four years, 11 months old on the May 1st start. Uh, for some children, this will be their very first experience ever with school. And for other students, they will have had either preschool or TK in a prior year. So it'll be a mix of students in those kindergarten classes. Again, some never have any schooling at all, some have a preschool, some have having um, TK a year before. Um, so it just depends on where they're at. The next book that they're continuing on. Um, at this time, we're going to um, introduce um, Sarah Alls. So she's going to be presenting on behalf of the Bennett um, uh, uh, for book signing. Thank you. And I just actually, although my son is older, you have to see the picture behind me as well. That was pure coincidence. That is not <laughs> on purpose. After the presentation was made, I said, hey, that's my guy, and he was so little. So, you know, as you'll notice, there's sort of a common, oh, yes, some of the teachers over there, uh, a common theme that I think you'll see throughout your time in the Oak Park Unified School District is that we are a close-knit community um, and many, many of the people who work in this community, um, some of us live in this community, some of our children live in this community, but many of us send our children to school in this community. And we do that for a reason. Many of us have experience in other school districts. Um, we know people who work in other school districts. We have um, connections and we receive information about other school districts. And I can tell you as one example, that I am um, so, I feel so fortunate that my children have been able to receive their education through the Oak Park Unified School District. And I also think that it can provide confidence and comfort to all of you, to the parents in our school district, that we want the very best, not only for all of your children, but for our children because they're here too. Um, I will tell you, give you a brief overview of the kindergarten program. Uh, at all three schools. And what I will tell you is that I spend a lot of time at all three schools, and you will find a very, very similar kindergarten program, no matter where you are in our school district. Our teachers over here, we have a sampling of our kindergarten teachers sitting here. They work closely together, they communicate a lot, and they work hard to ensure that there is uniformity and that students are receiving the highest quality level of instruction, of care, of nurturing, no matter what class in they're in. So um, we've got our five hour a day program. You're gonna see a sample of the fill schedule and of a sample um, agenda of a, of a school day here in just a little bit. Um, just like TK, 
The kindergarten program is designed based on the developmental needs of these kindergarten students. So while there are similarities between the of and kindergarten, you're going to find that kindergarten is a continuation of the exposure that students are receiving in uh, those who attend TK, and then it's a continuation for those who are coming either for other programs or from spending quality time at home. We, of course, have our very, very experienced um, and highly qualified teachers. I will uh, reinforce what Dr. Davis said at the beginning, that uh, it is a, an absolute joy and pleasure to walk in to the TK classrooms and the kindergarten classrooms at our school district because of the skill and the passion that our teachers exhibit every single day. Uh, I don't I don't know if I would find the thing we're being in another place, but I do know that we have it here. You're going to hear a little bit more about the academic program here in just uh, a few moments. But just like all California public schools, um, our curriculum in kindergarten is based on state standards, uh, the English language arts standards, the math standards and the next generation science standards. Something unique that you're also going to hear a little bit more about um, in our school district that I think we're very proud of and that we know is a, a, a crucial component, especially for our youngest students, is that we have a full-time counselor at each of our elementary schools. Uh, this is something that we've built upon through the years. It's something that makes us very unique. And I think you're going to see through your time here the benefits that that brings. Um, the, the lesson, the explicit lesson for students are receiving, but also just the informed support that they receive as they navigate and try to, to learn how to be a student in a school, how to be a friend, how to be a high quality member of a group and of a community. And then I will say that, um, that the collaboration is very strong with our TK teachers. One of the benefits of being a small school district also is that articulation is it's easier, it's key, and it's uh, something that's very important in our school district. Something that you heard about TK, you'll hear about kindergarten as well, and that is that uh, our kindergarten program, the most important component is that students feel safe and happy while they're in our classrooms, while they're, while they're on our schoolyard. So our teachers are, are, are highly focused on those academic components because we need to make sure that students are receiving those building blocks from a very young age so that once they get to first grade and second grade or third grade, they're prepared for those. But fundamentally, even more important than that, is that a student must feel safe and happy in order to learn all of those skills and those standards. And that's what you'll see when you walk into these classrooms. Um, I love walking into any classroom in any grade in our school district. It is it's a true joy. Uh, but I'll say that my favorite and probably the favorite of some others, even if they don't admit it, is walking into a TK or a kindergarten classroom. The wide eyes, the smiling, the looks of making meaning and making those connections. Um, we had a little side conversation over here. I will point out this teacher because she might be embarrassed, although it's not the teacher who gets most embarrassed in that for all the teachers. Uh, she was telling me just about something that happened today. She's been a teacher for many, many years, very experienced. Um, but today, she said it was one of the most meaningful lessons that she had, and it was a writing workshop lesson. Um, students in kindergarten are learning to write, uh, are learning persuasive writing, right? And that doesn't start with actually writing an essay, of course. It starts with a lot of talking and making connections to their lives and making meaning in what's around them. And she felt so much joy because of the connections and the joy that those students felt in the classroom today. I'm now going to turn it over to Mitchell Heather Scrum to talk a little bit more about that academic content. Firsthand to what an incredible secret they told because and how very basically I just want to And they are, that's probably more than any other grade level in the district. We work together so for free. And we focus on what is best for the kids. We're always sharing best practices, always discussing what works, what doesn't, what do we need to do to change our curriculum to improve it. 
to better address the needs of the kids that are coming to our classroom. Again, as Justice was just all mentioned, it's all focused on learning the state standards, those uh, college formats and those English standards and the next generation science standard. All of our learning with based in hands-on experiences because we found through research that students make meaning when they can have experience with something first and build meaning with what they experience. So it might just be playing with a stack of blocks one day, and the next day we'll be stacking those blocks and seeing how fun we can get that stack. And then we'll work on dividing that stack into two, which has more of our viewer. Then starting to build experience and it is with Neverson, starting to build vocabulary, starting to build capacity for the academic learning. Um, all comes in through those kids are an activity where it's engaging and it's something they want to do because it's fun and exciting and every day they want to know about the story in sugar garden. That's why I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, our science, just like our math and reading, is based on hands-on experiences. We want to give these kids opportunity to explore the world around them. And I love our thought science program because it's really based on what they find around them in nature. So looking at how the sun behaves and what the ground feels like in the sun versus in the shade. And what does that mean for can I go walking around with bare feet in the summer or in the winter? Or taking all those natural phenomena and relating it to themselves and using what they observe and what they experience to make meaning and make predictions about the world and then test those predictions and learn from what they've experienced. As we teach reading and writing, it's very much the same. We've spent a lot of time engaging with literacy all throughout the day with the same song. Shana, poem. We sing as we talk, as we jump. We recite poems as we are going to lunch or going to eat. We are always engaging with the verbal, the written, and uh, reading what we see, looking for examples of print in our environment, um, encouraging kids to go home and look at signs, look at letters in the grocery store, look for opportunities to make meaning out of what they see. And all of that, it's very magical. And I, I think that's the part that I love about that process the most is that one day a parent will come to me and say, you're bad, you could have walked. They took it by yourself. How did you do that? And I'll tell them, it wasn't me. They did it all by themselves, but it does feel so magical. And it's such a, an enlightening moment for the child and so exciting for the parent to um, have that experience and be excited about that. One of the building blocks to ensuring that all of our children are well prepared to learn is what we call our multi-tier system support. So three times a year, we perform screenings for kindergarten through fifth grade students in reading and writing to make sure that every student is making progress at an appropriate pace to be meeting standards by the end of the school year. I'm going to go TK, they get their first screening in the spring. So they've just gone through that first screening now in TK. Um, when we look at classroom data and then the data from screening, we may identify students who need a little extra support. And we have trained teams that use evidence-based material to work on skills like phonics, phonetic awareness, alphabetic uh, knowledge, um, comprehension, creative fluency, and all those math, those math skills. So instead of back in the day when maybe you were in school, you might have gotten extra help just finishing your work that you didn't finish in class. The research has shown us that if we go back and we help the kids fill in those gaps with those skills that they maybe haven't developed yet, they'll be much better prepared, more likely to not continue to meet that support. We fill those gaps, they can learn at the same pace as their peers. And that is the whole goal of our multi-tiered systems of support. And the earlier we can support them, 
the left flank frigate Bayar took me to a meeting with Kurdish support. Uh, looking at our fever burn schedule, it's a little different from the TK schedule. We are transitioning more towards a traditional academic schedule. You'll see reading and Vera and writing. We still have special, they still get the exterior art and innovation lab and library like everybody else. Um, but we are integrating a lot of those hands on things throughout work integrating balanced literacy throughout reading and writing all through the day. Um, also looking for opportunities to play. Um, just like TK, the play brings out our meaningful learning and the opportunity to solve problems, the opportunity to learn how to go along with others because one of the big things that happens in kindergarten is we start to do a lot of partner work and not start from having the opportunity to play with other kids so we can learn how to start solving those problems. Um, in the words of one of my very favorite principals, who dared to say that, your child is the center of your universe and should be, but they're not the center of the universe, so we need to teach them. But they're not always going to get their way. And it's a hard lesson, but it's a real life lesson. A, a big piece of kindergarten, it's helping them understand how do I handle that when I don't get what I want? How do I learn to work with others? How do I learn to let others choose and not just me? And that's a big piece of kindergarten. It's falling through everything we do in the kindergarten classroom. And now I'm going to the search in the gal bucket. All right, so you had a chance now to learn all about the different elements for TK and kindergarten. I'm sure that you'll have questions. I hope that you've been writing them down throughout. We are always stupid when a presentation, so you will have the opportunity in order to research to ask those soon. Big question is okay, now what can I do? I want to get my child read. First thing is, take a deep breath. It's not up here, so I'm asking you to do that. It's going to be okay. <laughs> Your child is four, they're in through TK, possibly turning five, or they're five already, but it's been the third kindergarten. They're going to be ready. Your child will be okay. There are some things, though, that you can do if you were really to. Um, one thing that always helps is we your child will have their bonding time with them. Give them the opportunity to work and come look at the food food box. Talk about the story, what's going on in it. Enjoy that screen together with your child. Another thing that you can do is practice the purple scissors and crayon. Just being able to hold a scissor is a skill that they work really in TK and in kindergarten, but it's something that if you practice at home, it will help them develop those fine motor skills. Hold even scissor crayon. Think about what kind of pencil you have in your house or a crayon. They have those jumbo crayons or those um, pencils that are so differently as well, different pencil grips. So thinking about what you can do with your writing and pencil paint is to think about how your child is holding that new pencil while they're drawing. But you can just jump and sort. A lot of that could just even be as you're cooking at home. You know, it's like you are having to take out the little bit better than the yesterday. And it doesn't make sense, but bear with me. Okay, so for example, taking out spinach leaves out of the container, right? One, two, three. Seeing if they could fill the number with you or with your race of air. Self care practice. This is the biggest one. All right. Think about all the things that your child has to do in order to get ready in the morning, and I'm telling you here, it's going to make their life easier. All right? Not only do you have to get yourself ready, but also be about getting your child ready in the morning, too. How do they try to pull on their own underwear? Pull on their own pants. How do they put on their socks? Their shoes. Socks are the hardest thing. Um, shoes, make them into a heart. Thinking about different things, cutting the stickers in half, putting half of the sticker on one shoe and half the sticker on the other, which will go on which foot. 
all different tips and tricks that you could use. Thinking about the um, backpack and your lunch box. So that exciting moment when your child gets their backpack. Yeah. And when they pick out their lunch box and figure or their snack and figure. Practice closing it, opening it, putting it in your backpack, how do you zip your backpack, how do you put a jacket on. Go through the motions of the day and think about all the things that your child will need to do. Yes, they're tough. Okay, they're the adults that can help. Yeah. Having that practice at home though will help them feel more independent and will also make sure that they get there to the snack quicker instead of having to wait for someone to come over and insist on the tool book. The help will be there. Positive messaging. Our children are so receptive to how we're feeling as adults. The more excited you are, the more excited your child will be. Feel free to take walks in front of the school where your child will be placed. Go to the school you're going to go to. This is so exciting. I can't wait for you to be there. All the excitement that you have, your child is going to sense it and they are going to get excited too. It's a really wonderful moment. And I know it's a big deal for you as a parent to have your children start here. Good to pay, pay, and even at elementary school. They're going to have children with a spirit. Now I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I don't remember. Um, I'm going to go back to toy lane. That's also part of the day. Then go to the bathroom. So um, practice wiping. Sometimes, you know, it's even going through the motions of pull the toilet paper off the roll. How do you rip it so the whole third toilet paper roll doesn't fall out? Um, how you fold the toilet paper so that way you can wipe. I don't think it's more specific, but you know, just practice. Because all those things that come natural to us, we had to learn, and this is what your children are learning right now. They're learning all these things that come naturally, so really break down every single step and thinking about what they have to do to get ready. Don't get wipey boogers. I have a quarter also, okay? <laughs> I get it. Um, practice. How do you blow your nose? That's a really hard one. They may not get it until later on. It's okay. But just practicing these things are going to help your child feel confident to feel successful coming to school. I'm going to hand it over to Mrs. All to talk about school go Park. Okay, yeah, so switching gears a little bit, some of you will be interested in what we have to offer um, either before, after, or after the school day or both. Um, Club Oak Park is our extended care program. This is a program that we launched here in Middle Park Unified School District in 2018, not so long ago, uh, because we recognize the need of so many of our families, the need of working parents, um, the need to extend the time that, that your children are here with us in the school district, and knowing that we wanted to create a program that we could offer to families that really matched that quality and that climate of care. The climate of care is something that you're going to hear a little bit more about here in just a few minutes. Um, that matched the quality of care that we aim to achieve for all of our students during school hours. So Public Park, as you'll see here in the presentation, in general, um, for those of you who are not as familiar, uh, I think we've spoken to many of you from our office too. You're eager uh, to get your children registered. Um, but you may or may not know, we have a program that runs right on the campus of each of our elementary schools. And then we also extend that program up to our middle school. So it runs PK all the way through eighth grade. Um, we provide care on every day that school is in session. And we also offer care on many of our non-school days. Those are days when the schools are closed, um, spring break, winter break, some of our staff development days, local holidays, and those are days that you can choose to register your children. We're also, and those are full days of care that we're open for those who need that service. Um, we do have different options available to our families, and you're going to learn more about that when we send out the information, which has not been done yet. You're going to receive information all about this. But you can choose to register your children for one day a week, two days a week, three days a week, all the way up to five days a week. And we register by the month. So we offer our, our program monthly. 
and we do our best to provide flexibility to our families because we know that your situation sometimes change and that your needs change. So we do offer the flexibility to change those contracts from month to month. Um, you will have the opportunity to check out our website when the new information for the new year is posted, which has not been done yet. But I would even encourage you to check out our website and the climate stamps showing our client care program to get a bit more of a flavor of what we offer. I'll tell you that our program is unique in a few significant ways compared to other programs that we've explored. Um, first off, we really aim to carefully select the staff that we hire to be with your children. Second to that is the training that we provide. So all of our staff participate in extensive training uh, and they're held to high expectations. We have a very large program. Uh, I don't know that we would find a similarly sized program anywhere else because we want to accommodate all of the families who need to care. And so don't cap our enrollment numbers at a, at, at a maximum per se. We ask parents to register within a registration window, and then we do everything we can behind the scenes to prepare for that number of students and for those individual students who are coming to us. We want you to have this service if it's something that you need and that you want, and we don't want it to be an obstacle for you, for your families, um, in order to come to Oak Park Unified. A quick snapshot of what a what an afternoon might look like after school for a TK student or a kindergarten student. And remember that our TK students and kindergarten students are those who are with us the longest hours. They're dismissed the earliest, right? Because when your children get up to first grade and then when they matriculate to fourth grade, they're going to have a longer school day. But because TK students and kindergarten students are dismissed at around 12 or 12 15, and then at 1 15 in kindergarten, they're with us for a really significant amount of time, and we know the importance of that. So we know the importance of creating a program that is meaningful, that you know that when you send your children to our program, that it's time well spent, that it's a nurturing environment, that it's a fun environment, that it's a stimulating environment, and that they're getting an extension of some of the skills that are being provided to them during the school day. Those are our objectives. So we have snack time. Our students need to be nourished and they need uh, to be fed to continue those afternoons. For our youngest students, we do start our afternoons after the school day with downtime. Talk a little bit about naps and that we don't do naps in elementary school. But we know that especially at the beginning of a the year, these students are tired, really, really tired. And so we know that in Club Oak Park, bringing them in and over to us, that we have decompression time, we have quiet time, we have mindfulness time, and then we jump into some other activities. We move into snack time to nourish them. We move into indoor and outdoor activities from recreation to arts and crafts. Um, we expose them to STEAM activities, science, technology, um, exposure to engineering type of activities. Something that we also do is we build on the uh, social emotional behavioral learning program that Ms. Longo spoke a little bit about called Second Step. We adopted in our uh, for our after school hours the Second Step program that's designed for after school hours. So those skills and learning how to resolve conflict, how to be a member of a community, we extend uh, those lessons and those activities into our after school program as well. Um, I will say that aside from Club Oak Park, you're going to be receive information once the school year starts on some other after school options that are offered to students at all of our elementary schools. Other after school enrichment type classes, those are offered through a separate organization who we work with. Um, one of those programs that offers a large majority of our after school enrichment classes to families is called Growing Outdoors. So you'll receive information about that. And that's different than Club Oak Park or Extend Your Care program. We also have other organizations that come in and offer um, various programs like musical theater, and you'll receive information about those. Um, and those those typically don't come until the school year beginning, yeah. but those are offered in different trimesters, and there are a lot of really great options. Everything from chess to woodworking to dance. Um, and you'll hear a little bit more about that. Uh, 
I encourage you to take a look at the website, but also please feel free to contact our office through the email um, or your phone number if you have more questions about public park, and I'll also be here to answer some questions at the end. I'm going to turn the mic over to Mr. Brad Benyon. Good. Good evening, welcome to everybody. Um, you, you've heard an awful lot about you know, just how great a place uh, Oak Park is, the Oak Park School, it really is true. And sitting, thinking, again, hearing this presentation again for um, how many years, and it's always a, a bit new and fresh, and um, I'm not gonna show you any other pictures of my kids. I'm <laughs> sorry, they're not that cute anymore. But, um, but they, they did go to Oak Hills and, uh, and got their start here. And um, I think that was really kind of the crux of this is the climate of care that we, we talk about all the time has already been woven through a lot of the discussions um, that you've heard tonight. Um, and it's because we, your kids are our kids. When, when, they, when they come here, we, we call it, we, there are kids, and we're not taking them away from you, but, but that, that's how we feel about it. And, and all of the different things, you know, yes, there's the academics, and we, try, we think of work for the academics, but I also want to point out what is our district motto? It's right down here at the bottom, it says, educating, compassionate, and global, creative global citizens. When they walk out of here across the stage um, in 14 years, um, from our high school, we have a huge goal that we want them to be that boy, not just fully based on academics, not just based on you know, um, a performer or an athlete or something else. They want to be the whole person. And that starts with the feet day, it starts with kindergarten. Um, so again, I, I can go through each of these different topics about our, our nutrition program. We, we know that all these things to take care of the, the child, your health, overall, your wellness, uh, both physical and mental. You, if you don't have that that strength, the the the, the, um, the wellness, you're not going to achieve academically or, or other in other arenas too. So we want to make sure that um, our partnership with you can entail all of these things. Contrition um, is a real highlight in this district. Uh, unfortunately, uh, our director Captain Adams couldn't be here tonight to really go through all the details. Um, but the food is really good. <laughs> and and um, I, I said that I was a small time middle school principal at Padilla. And you know, middle school food, you don't think of it as, yeah, that's something I'm going to seek out. <laughs> you do. And, and, and the kids really like the food. And it's nutritious food. It's not um, something that's just pre, pre packaged all the time and, you know, off the shelf. Uh, we have really dedicated. Uh, food service workers and and programs who uh, and I I even told uh, when, you know just that, that you know, again fresh seasonal organic non GMO uh, free of corn um California grown all these things are are tenants that we do into our our nutrition program and and there's a huge amount of uh, attention to pay to that and policy to pay to that because that's important for the kids to be well to then achieve. Okay, um, so there's that. I, I'm a huge proponent of, uh, of sleep. If anybody pays attention to sleep studies um, in, in the United States, and particularly with students, um, we're, we're all very sleep deprived and our kids get that way too. Starting sleep habits very early is critical. And um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll say this, I said this last night at a webinar, but um, screens and everything having your kids off the screens early, get them to sleep. Um, it is so critical to, to their development. And I'm not just talking about human uh, DK in kindergarten. Um, develop the patterns early um, and, and the habits because it is absolutely critical to that. It was already mentioned about character education for the second step in, in TK, but uh, each of our schools have different uh, uh, character education uh, programs. Um, and tied to the next one that has already been highlighted, each of our elementary schools has a full-time uh, credentialed counselor. And that's not usual in anywhere. Um, most school districts have roaming counselors and you maybe get a counselor for a few hours on a campus 
you know, they kind of rotate around and if there's a need, they'll, they'll go and talk to a class or a particular student. We have a truly outstanding mm -hmm. counselor, um, but one dedicated to each of the, of the elementary schools. And um, you'll see them out on the yard all the time. They know every single kid. Um, they go into the classrooms and, and do uh, all sorts of lessons throughout the, the, the school year. And again, it's all of that, again, development, as, as was mentioned, it's, it's how they interact with, with others. But um, education is a human endeavor. Things go wrong. Um, how do we handle that? How do we learn to be, uh, the, that those interactions be positive overall? So again, that is really, just a huge critical point to uh, to our school district that we have um, counselors um, that fit into the your fights. Um, physical fitness, this is also unusual. Uh, we have a credential and full-time uh, physical education teacher. Um, it's not, so but we have somebody who's a specialist uh, to, to take the kids or handle how to work through physical fitness. Like, um, we have all sorts of environmental stewardship, uh, uh, sustainability, or talk about that with the, the food, but also we, we um, did different recycling programs. Um, the, you'll, uh, if you haven't seen the uh, solar panels on uh, each of the, the uh, school sites, we have, uh, I'm gonna get this wrong, but I think it's about 75 to 80% of our electricity is, is generated uh, through our, our solar panels. Um, and we do more to Edison does wet us. <laughs> um, and then school safety. Well, there's a there's a topic. Um, that that's in my job title is, is the director of school safety and student support. That entails everything from you know the, the facilities. How do we have uh, safe facilities um, in and outside the classroom? Um, it, it it is the uh, emergency preparedness that that we have. Uh, the drills that we have. We're constantly thinking and working on what, what is it that we need to do to make sure that we keep our kids safe. That's your primary concern, that's our primary concern. Um, so I, I know there's always different questions about that, but that, that is, again, part of the whole, you cannot have a student achieve um, academically if they do not feel safe, absolutely. Um, and then just briefly, uh, we, we really encourage maintaining the balance, um, you know, at school, at home. Uh, find the time to the, we call the PDF, uh, uh, playtime, downtime, family time. Try it, maybe you need to build that in. Again, I'm not talking about just these grade levels. Establish these habits, you know, throughout their, their, um, their academic careers. Um, having the time to uh, sit down and eat, eat with them, read with them. Um, have them play, um, however that, that is. Um, really, really focus on that with, with home. Again, that, that carries over to what, what they end up doing at, at school. Our homework policy, we've had a, a homework policy in place uh, for um, know, probably the last 15 years or so, where there's not homework per se. And wait a second, wait, you said per se. Um, there's not mand mandated homework. Um, at these grade levels. It's, there might be suggested activities. We do suggest that uh, you are reading with, with the student um, at, at home. There may be some activities that come home with, with uh, a message from the teachers that say, you know, we did this, this at school day. You might want to work with them on, again, counting or however it might be. But it's not something where they're going to be graded the next day on, uh, you know, turn in, uh, turn in this, this sheet for that, okay? So again, I, I just want to, there, there's so many topics to this that um, I really could bore you throughout the entire evening um, about uh, safety, about student support, but I, I come back to the teachers are unbelievable and they care because your kids are our kids. But again, uh, uh, welcome and uh, enjoy the overall journey. Right, just a few um, last minute details um, for all of you. Um, this week, as a reminder, um, all of our OSPAR residents should have already enrolled in school. So if you haven't, make sure you go right now um, and then make sure you get your child enrolled. That's very important. 
Um, our district of choice families um, will see, receive an email in early May um, regarding their school placement. So if you're at DOC, you should be receiving that about the next month. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments about class placement. Um, the Friday before school starts, um, the year. teachers will be posted online, so your student's teacher will be available at that time for you to receive and view. Uh, that's usually been a Friday uh, before school starts, so keep that um, in the back of your mind there. As far as key communication, uh, key orientation, you will have an actual orientation with your child's teacher um, before school starts. So this is just a broad overview. You'll have an actual uh, orientation in the classroom with the teacher um, prior to the first day of school. So that's something that you'll be looking for more information on um, in July and should um, receive information from the school about that specific board. Um, we do do our best to ensure that um, all of our students remain in our neighborhood schools. Um, we think that's very important. Um, and or with siblings um, at whatever school they are attending. Uh, for our DOC families, um, we anticipate anticipate notifying you um, by May 8th, um, and the notification should come from Kara Newton, um, so look out for those emails as well. Um, no one will find out their teacher before, you know, we have the, the teacher posted, and, and then you'll have a chance to meet that teacher and go to the uh, orientation um, at that time, um, right before school starts. Um, and just a reminder, all of our teachers are fantastic. You've seen them in the car around here. They're bubbly, they're fun, they're student-centered, they love kids. And they're going to love that your students like they love their own. Uh, so you really can't go wrong with classroom placement. So all of our students are placed in classrooms. Um, you know, they try and balance classrooms. So we have a similar number of boys and girls, and we have students with varying levels in each classroom. So you're going to be thrilled no matter who you get. Uh, so I just want to go throw that out there. I know this, especially when it's your first teacher, your first child, there's this, who's my child's teacher going to be? Well, just trust and know that, that they're going to be well taken care of um, regardless of who their teacher is. Um, it's an excited time to be sure. Um, right now, I want to open it up for some general questions. Um, if you have specific questions about your child, it would be better if you contacted us individually. Um, but for any general questions, I'm actually hoping that so you guys could come back up again and then we'll try to stand here and if uh, there's anything in particular, I just Feel the questions. Are there any questions that anyone has? I know we just fell we were now amended here, but any specific questions from this? Yeah. I was mentioning or wanted to mention that uh you know priority uh types of appearance of pickup so fun. So I I won't I don't expect to I'm picking them up since I think that there'd be that atmosphere care. So how does that work with snack or lunch situation? I feel them. I'll repeat the question. There was a question about uh, TK lunches. Since lunch is not uh, in the middle of the school day and lunches are provided to those who are interested after the school day, we make sure that students receive those lunches, whether they're going home and being picked up or whether they're going to Cobo Park in the after school program. So we find out, um, I believe TK will find out from the parents and the teachers find out in the morning uh, and that will coordinate it through our student nutrition program and the lunches are then given to the student, correct? I have a TK teacher not yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't say it as well as you would ask. Did I answer something? Yeah. Sure. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I have another plug over hard question. Um, are the senior for TK they and go with what grades like I would? Or are they separate or they make for older grades? How does that work for the club of Okay, good question. This is a club of park question. And are this are the students in triangle? They're grouped by grade level. Um, and only later in the day for students who might stay with us when our numbers have dwindled down because we don't keep all of our staff as late in the day when we don't meet all the gym because of our enrollment numbers, our students then in triangle is over anymore. But we um, design our activities and our rotation specific to the individual grade level and those development beliefs. And um, something I don't think that I explicitly said, it was that we also have homework during, during um, each afternoon. And while there isn't necessarily homework that's assigned, as we discussed, in the OCK or kindergarten, uh, kindergarten teachers will say, give suggestions of what can be practiced at this school until you follow their lead. 
with our kindergarten students right. in that homework time. So even with our TK students, we do we read. We provide reading time. Uh, we read to students. Uh, that's integrated. Uh, we even read to our fourth and fifth grade students because actually they love being read to as well. Yes, uh, well, right here. I have a question. What about some of the ontology that is very much my way that you go to talk to this? Is there things that are some scale lectures in there as far as what it's been seen? That's right. It's all in the front out there. So the, the menus are posted online. They should provide some pretty detailed information. I'm not sure about every single ingredient. You might have to check with the cafeteria um, on that. Uh, if you go to our district webpage, um, I'm going to find out some additional information um, there. Sure. Okay, that's what I thought. Let me send over to check. Go there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just go ahead and talk about it. So there is a form that's online, and our director of instruction is very open and available. So if you send her an email, she would be happy to respond to the guidance for that process. The ingredients are not listed on the food. So to your, your question, like, frequent, not listed on food. However, um, once you have that doctor's note, and also the out of be listed with our health office as well, so it's going to communicate with our service supervisor, with our teachers, and also communicate with our cafeteria staff as well. We um, do have a food that is prepared that is meat free, so vegetarian, as well as food that's cooking that. Um, there is gluten free options as well, nut free. So, our, um, I mean, if we could put Mr. Benioff, who was talking about our nutrition program, it really is incredible as far as meeting our children's needs. So please just reach out to um, Ms. Catherine Iam, and that's on the district website, and she'll be able to guide you through that process. Thank you. So okay, I hope that helps answer that question. And then, and then I just want to step in really quick, and that's that's something about it with RP that is very, very different. Um, we're a small school district, so there's only 4,200 plus kids in our district, which is very, very small when you think of LA Unified and Caneo and Los Gerdes and Project. That's the beauty of Oak Park. You can actually get an answer the same day <laughs> or at first 24 hours later. Because, you know, when you get a, and, it, and it's not their fault, they're just bigger, these other places. And they, 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 they do the best they can and they do a good job. But it's just, we're small. And so we pride ourselves in getting back to people within 24 to 48 hours. Um, that's, pre that's pretty much our, our rule of thumb in this district. And that's the beauty of it. So when uh, Mrs. Longo said, you know, reach out to Catherine Adams and write Catherine, She'll get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. It's not like some places, two weeks, I haven't heard yet, you know, that kind of a thing. So I just wanted to put it out there. If that's something that, uh, now that I have grandchildren, I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, Oak Park is like the first place because it's small and um, everybody knows each other and everybody knows how to get things done. And you know what? Go call that person. They'll know the answer, you know, that type of thing. And in a larger district, it's very difficult. It's not their fault, it's just their large. Thank you. Another question over here? The culture of that. So, other part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You mentioned about the staff training, that the staff there is trained to a high level of distance. So, there's one. There's one of the more favorite first patients. They got it. What about the group that runs out of this district? And the same players to fight that. So, it's now a pretty large bridge. Thank you for the question. This is a question about our staffing, and I mentioned um, training and uh, especially about qualification. So uh, at each of our school sites, we have site leaders or assistant site leaders who are um, who are classified members of our staff who are trained uh, the same way other staff members at the school have been trained. Um, and those, those individuals uh, to be hired for those positions, have uh, education and experience in the area of child development. Um, and they run those programs. Under those people, we have many, many staff members, and these uh, those staff members we call mentors. We call them mentors because they're mentoring our young children who are attending the program. 
the vast majority of our staff members who are under work under the leadership and the guidance of our science leaders, our mentors must be um, high school graduates. Many of our mentors are college students. Uh, they're either in the process of uh, earning their college degree or they're in graduate school. Many of them are pursuing uh, teaching credentials. They're in teaching credential program. Some of them are in finished school. Some of our mentors are um, are uh, people who have finished their careers and they have grown children and they work in our program. Uh, we have many of the people who work in our program also work as aides in the classroom during the school day or as campus supervisors in our school. So that's a really great setup. We then have a, um, a smaller group of, of employees, very small actually, who we call our assistant mentors. And that's an opportunity for students who attend our high schools here in Oak Park to work in our program. They're called assistant mentors. Uh, we really only have a, a smattering of them and they work under the guidance of our mentors and our site leaders. Yes. Um, if, are we able to request if there's another student entering the same grade that we want our child to be the same class as? Are we allowed to request that or are those usually considered? Uh, typically, no. I mean, did we give an environmental request? Uh, let me let me have a principal ask if we can answer this, but um, the program comes to one in my answer. <laughs> so we know that kids come in with all kinds of units and experiences, and there might be a situation where you want your child separated from someone because it's a really good dynamic in preschool. Or you might want them with someone for a specific reason. It's hard to say, part one, answer no. I would suggest reach out to the school's principal sometime during the summer, and we can have that conversation. That again, the beauty of a small school district because we're available to you for the next half day. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. you have the yeah. <laughs> so I have a team play. I would like to know how the picture for the lunch time, like, he very picky eating, very, very picky. So how, like, I don't know, like, how the pizza, like, I, for sure, I gonna let him to be staying in the, the old crop, but for the lunchtime, you gonna have a staff take a look there, or how, how, how the pizza? Do you want to go there? So we had a question about picky eaters, and um, I don't picky eaters at all, I'm sure many of you are picky eaters, and they get less picky as they get older, they're being exposed to more food at school, I will say that because of the program, the speed nutrition program here, and the food that is scratch cooked in our kitchen, um, students are being exposed to all their friends eating it, especially because it's provided to anybody who wants it, right? There, there's a, we have funding to provide that to all students. But um, the question is, you know, will they be supervised to make sure that they eat? And I will say yes and no. Yes, they will be supervised. Um, and I think your question was specific to a TK student who will be attending Club Oak Park after school. And yes, we train our staff to be ro rotating, observing what students are eating or not eating, encouraging them to eat the, the healthier part of their lunch before they eat the other parts of their lunch. Like get into the head of what the parents will want to see in the lunchbox when they come home. But the, the no part of my answer is that we, we can't force them, right? And so we really encourage you to have those conversations over and over. And then whenever you have, just like Dr. Davis said, whenever you have a specific concern to speak to, to me or to the person at Hubble Park or your child's teacher or whoever it is, to say, hey, I'm, I'm observing this. My child, you know, is having to eat random thing all day. Is there anything that you can do or we can have those conversations? And, and in the state of California right now, the public schools, it's universal meals for all. So you know, everybody, they're going to get their meat, right? But it's still old school too. You can still pack pack the lunch with your kid, and you can sit with your kid, and you can go, okay, here's your fruit, here's your veggie, here's this. This is what I'm expecting you to eat today, you know. So, so you have those options, which makes it kind of neat for parents nowadays because you have the school nutrition option, which here is phenomenal. You already heard it, and the other option of of going over that the night before with your child and going, 
here's your applesauce and here's your this and here's your that and I want you to eat that I want to bring it home to me I want you to show me you know that kind of thing and when they're little you can do that later they'll fake you they'll toss it they'll train do whatever but when they're little like this they'll listen to you thank you question I guess just piggybacking with something you said triggered it is um so if we do the the school friend or two they get sent home so we see if they are our feeding stuff, is there like anything left over? Very sad in their lunch truck? I'm not really sure. Uh, well, when I, when I stand in a lunchbox with my child, instead of them getting the lunch from school, then I can see what's, you know, what's left over in, in the lunchbox or the fresh side body. You were saying that they're like leftover stuff. No, no, that is a little bit different. That's a little bit harder. To look like. So I, I will tell you um, that I try to be very honest with my children, and I tell them that I, that I never lied to them. But sometimes I will say, you know, that that the person at school is going to tell me, you know, <laughs> the, that part of the lunch before this other lunch. And there are people watching, so it, it, it's truth it's true at some level, and that works too. But so the peer pressure actually um, will, will help over time as well, seeing the other students eating those. Good question over here. I said to Roger that her first one, but um, and the school goes through and says, yes, and I mentioned there, I'm sure they're going to try and they were friddled together on this type of. Okay. So, yes, I'll let Heather come and answer that question. I'll just repeat it. The question is during the school day, do the TK students uh, play together with the kindergarten skater? And I believe it's the case. They don't overlap at Rook Bay. Okay, Adam. Okay, so Red Oak and Oak Hill. The recesses in the morning time overlap, so they do have a little bit of time where they play together, especially in the morning. At Brookside, because of the space available to keep the kiddos safe, they've staggered their recesses to give them space to spread out their elbows and not pressure to one another. Yeah, uh, but the kindergartners and teaching kids are in their own yard on all three campuses, so they're not out in the yard playing with kids ever. I don't think I have to do it. I did a older child who's in the mood for a brain here. Uh, naturally, then it's different in the soup bag. Is it still cuddle part that we do to the other front tongue with that pedigree versus they list out to the third five that? Hi, did you tell me that Adam with a third question that you had to clarify for Red Oak? And then your question as well. The second one I'll make is I'll go ahead and step in. Uh, Red Oak, TK, and K are in the yard together at drop off until the school day begins at 8 15. At that time, we have a lot of adult supervision outside. Then TK and K are not having recess again together the rest of the day. So, just to clarify, there are some differences in Lindsay Elementary School site. It's also very dependent on the spaces that we have. So that also gets taken into consideration. Okay, hold the first. I want to clarify your second question. Uh, that so uh, our TK students coming in and a third grader who are coming in. And so, um, yes, we have a program in Club Oak Park for our students to stay up until three o'clock. That's an option, that's a contract option. So parents have option to, to have their students in our program until 6 p.m., but we have a special option um, at a lower cost because it's, it's less time with us for TK and kindergarten students who will be picked up no later than three o'clock. We're very impressed about the whole group version. Yeah, and that, that's for convenience for, for parents who are in the evening out of All right, we're going to go ahead and hang out here for the next five or ten minutes if you have any additional individualized questions. But we'd like to thank you for attending. We have some contact information for our principals. We have our district website down here. Um, they have a whole TKK and FAQ page as well. Um, and so please visit us. And thank you so much for coming today. <laughs> Thank you.